that the real thief, I grew up in Yugoslavia, it's now seven countries, and so we would watch Cousteau and Attenborough and Sagan and everybody, and you know, next day in school, we were only talking about uh, Don't Ask Me, because yeah. that was cool, because they were so excited about, you know, they didn't know how experiments are going to turn out. I'll have, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, we'll look it up. Uh, 73, I think, BBC okay. show. Can I have a second question, and then I'll let these, these others. How much do you uh, interact with your fans and critics online, on blogs, Twitter, Facebook, things like that, um, yourself, personally? How much do we interact with the fans? I, I, I'll respond to things occasionally on Twitter. Um, I'm, I'm, it's not that I won't admit that when, when we're wrong, but for the most part, if it turns out that we were really wrong, we'll just address it in another episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I have had some uh, religious people who are very religious call, uh, email me to criticize me for my, for my, for my stance. Um, and I have occasionally engaged people when I felt like there was a useful conversation to be had. Um, in general, I, I don't invest in spending time on a conversation where it's not going to go anywhere. I, I'm, I'm interested in changing my mind if my mind can be changed. Um, and I'm interested in talking to other people who are the same. But uh, as far as having polemical discussions, I'm not interested in that. Uh, but yeah, I'd say the primary way we interact with the fans in terms of critique of our experiments is we'll re-tackle we'll re them. Or, well, in general, uh, as far as fans go and their impact on the show, uh, the show is, uh, I would say, primarily made up of uh, subjects that result from, in one way or another from uh, interactions with fans. We get thousands of emails from all over the world now, over in 160 countries or so, uh, and, uh, and it's, it, we keep a, a, a running list of, uh, it's always around 60, 70, 80, uh, uh, myths ahead of where we're actually shooting uh, and, and, and while a lot of times it's not a complete story that will end up uh, uh, in front of us because of the fan, it's, it's, uh, it's often a, a seed that somehow comes up in, a, in some discussion, some, something that came from a fan. It's all, it's all about, the, about the public and, and these kind of crazy things that happen when fan meets technology and science. So it's fans are huge for us. Um, this, I guess, speaking tour that you're going on now, uh, how did you decide upon locations like here, for example? Was it you know kind of university community or through the planetarium primarily? Or I guess how are you guys deciding where you go? Um, uh, people approach us. Uh, the STEM initiative from the White House has been something that is uh, that we're uh, uh, involved with a great deal, and uh, and this event is is also based on STEM and, uh, and some of the others that we're going to. Uh, but we're, uh, we're out there, uh, uh, people in particular engineering schools and, and uh, science-centric uh, 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 schools will, will approach us. And if we have time, uh, we go. We don't, uh, we don't go out and do tours. Of, we're shooting uh, uh, 46 weeks out of the year, and so occasionally we sneak a weekend. Yeah, we were filming on Friday, and we'll be filming again on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we're playing hooky on Monday. So. Uh, you had a question. Yeah, so when you're looking through this dialogue that you've created with fans on this, um, what makes a good myth to the show? Uh, it's anything It's anything that we're interested in. It's anything we can sink our teeth into. Um, we do have some uh, some key things that we uh, that we will perk us up. We like things that are funny. Uh, and to, we like to have fun with, with what we're doing. And so anything that uh, that is fun, we'll we'll look at uh, things that have uh, unexpected uh, or, or uh, uh, things that are that are surprising in, in their nature. We'll tackle. We have to have things that are uh, very hands-on. Uh, part of the thing with us is that, I mean, we don't, we don't just talk about things. We have to get physical with stuff and experiment with it. So we're not going to go out and prove a negative. We're not going to go look for Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or the Chupacabra or the Jersey Devil. <laughs> uh, the the, the woo-woo is, of is off of our radar. We want to we be able to test both sides of a, of a question and find out if it really is as counterintuitive as the you know, prevailing wisdom might be or not.
but fortunately, production uh, found early on that if we were interested in something, if, if we got excited about some particular uh, prospect of playing with a gadget or this or that, that it was going to make good TV. And so they let us do it. And uh, you know, it's uh, it, we are often asked, when are we going to run out of this and, and stories to tackle? And, uh, uh, and I don't know, we're just kind of, we're, we're headlong into technology and, and the world at large, and, and it, there's no end of shenanigans that we can uh, sink our teeth into to, to play with. And we've got time for one more question from someone who hasn't asked a question yet. Yes. How did you guys start doing this? So right after college, how did you get involved? Uh, actually, each other? Jamie has a, a degree in Russian studies, and I have a high school diploma. So that's the sum total of our engineering and science education. Well, we both have engineering degrees, honorary. Honorary. Okay. <laughs> We're both also honorary bomb technicians. Which schools? <laughs> uh, I'm with uh, Villanova, and uh, I recently got an uh, honorary doctorate from Villanova, and, uh, and we both got one, a, 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 an engineering degree uh, from the uh, University of Maine. But uh, we, uh, we were approached in 2002 by a producer from Australia whose idea, whose original idea for Mythbusters was a three-host show in which one host was a woman who would interview people about urban legends and then she'd have her guys back in the shop who would actually build and test experiments based on what she was finding out. And they asked us to send in a demo reel and we sent in this reel that we shot about two hours, caught on my laptop, and uh, they loved it so much they actually restructured the show. They realized that we could host the show and build the stuff. They showed up about three weeks later and we've been, we've been filming the show pretty much 45 weeks a year ever since. For eight years now, we are somewhere around our 200th hour of the clusters that we're filming right now. Thanks so much, guys. If you have any further questions, if you have Sandra back here, she may be able to help you. Can I can get you out there? All right. Just a second. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.